You could argue that living soil is one of the Earth's most valuable resources, but intensive disturbance like this just hammers life in the soil. Erosion, compaction, fallow, removal of organic matter and other vegetation adversely affects this beneficial life. The living soil produces a whole variety of ecosystem services, and many of these services we take for granted. In many cases, we treat soils like dirt. But soils clean our air and water, they prevent erosion and flooding, and they stabilize our climate. If you had to put a value on this valuable resource, it would be trillions of dollars. The soil is really sort of like the human heart. It keeps beating and beating, keeps you alive, but never sends you a bill. And the living soil is much the same way. It provides all these ecosystem services and provides for our own health and stability, but never sends us a bill. The living soil is one of the greatest opportunities for farmers because 90% of the world's organisms actually live beneath the soil surface. In a single handful of soil, you can have 10,000 to 50,000 different species. And it's essential because it's these organisms that actually absorb the nutrients, that absorb the water, and to keep the root systems healthy. Hi, I'm Dale Strickler. I'm standing in Southern Oregon, but I'm from Kansas. And in Kansas, water dictates everything. Everything we do in agriculture is limited by the amount of water we can get into our crop. And the amount of water we can get into our crop is limited by the amount that we can extract from the root system. So the next thing we look at is, is how do we take care of this drought? What can we do about it? Obviously we can't control the rainfall we're getting, but what can we do about the amount of moisture that gets in our plants? And we've done no-till and that helps, helps tremendously. We've done cover crops to generate a mulch and increase the organic matter in our soil. And, and we were looking for what's the next step. The next step that we tried was inoculating with mycorrhizal fungus. And this is something I became acquainted with back in college and first proposed it to people and they said, oh, that's another one of those snake oils, you know, fairy dust, wiffle powder. And we've heard this before. This is a living organism that colonizes plant roots and it increases the efficiency of the root system. A lot of people don't realize it, but plant roots only colonize about 2% of the soil volume. You inoculate with mycorrhizal fungi, part of that fungus lives inside the plant root, the rest of it forms hyphae that branch out up to two feet in every direction and increases the, the, the volume of the soil occupied up to about 20%. That's 10 times the absorptive area. So you can extract a greater percentage of the moisture that's in the soil. And one time I, was, I bought a used four-wheeler and uh, I kept running out of gas. And I had to walk and I, I was walking along the road and the farmer who sold me the four-wheeler uh, said, you ran out of gas? I go, yeah. He said, why didn't you just flip the switch for the emergency gas tank? Mycorrhizae allow you to tap into the emergency gas tank in your soil. It said there's water in there that we never utilize without the mycorrhizal fungi. And being able to tap into that emergency gas tank can buy us two, three extra weeks to catch that next rain. Hi, my name is John Andreas. I am uh, actually from the San Joaquin Valley in California. That's not where I am right now, but, but here I am. Beautiful part of Oregon. And the reason I'm here is to promote an idea, a thought, some would say a notion, but something that I know works because I have first-hand experience. My experience is in the desert soils of California. Those are really tough soils to farm in, especially when your ground has been utilized for over a hundred years. As a fourth generation California farmer, I so wish I had access to mycorrhiza a long time ago because here's what I've learned over the years. Our soils have degraded. The efficiency of our soils has been lost due to over farming. And, uh, and now with water supplies being tight, with fertilizer expenses being through the roof, how do we survive that? Well, there's some things we have no control over, but mycorrhizae and the use of it in our crops is something we can control. And for a minor investment, particularly in permanent crops, which uh, is most of my experience, 
we can go a long way toward mitigating these deficiencies that we're dealing with in California soils. Hello, my name is Bill Gasser. I'm a crop consultant in the Klamath Lake basins of uh, Southern Oregon, Northern California. My focus and my passion is, as a crop consultant is about the uh, growing world we have. And with that, uh, we incorporate the mycorrhizae fungi into uh, every commodity we grow in the basin if uh, we can. One of them that's right behind me is our alfalfa. Alfalfa in the basin is typically in for six to eight years on an average life stand. Mycorrhizae is applied one time at the beginning of the stand, which it can also be done on established stand, but we try to uh, apply it one time over the life of those six to eight years, which makes it extremely economical. And with that uh, comes the increased yield and increased water efficiency, which is what it's all about. So in an attempt to improve the drought tolerance of our crops, we inoculated, so we tried mycorrhizal fungi that we got from mycorrhizal applications, and we inoculated corn, we inoculated soybeans, we inoculated wheat, our major crops. We didn't need to flag those areas. You could tell right to the line where those were. When the yield results came back, we were seeing a roughly 10% increase in yield on the same water. This was on dry land crops, this was on irrigated crops. And at the price of the product, we're getting a, somewhere around a three to five to one return on investment. And that's huge in our area. I mean, that makes for over a thousand acre farm, that's many thousands of dollars. The improved efficiency that I see when mycorrhiza is used is something I wish I had years ago when we were farming. When, when times are really tough, when water is short, when fertilizer costs are soaring, when your commodity prices are, are making it impossible to farm, this is the advantage I wish I had. Today's science is, is such that it has brought us a wonderful product that you can count on being shelf stable, that it is usable, user friendly, and one that I know works because of my firsthand experiences with it. Mycorrhizal fungi are tiny absorptive threads in the soil and they're attached to the roots of the plants and they grow out from the plant roots and they forage in the soil for moisture and nutrients. So to get them established on a crop, we have to use the spores, which are the seeds of the mycorrhizal fungi. Agriculture is getting back to its roots and rediscovering the living soil. Key members of this living soil are mycorrhizal fungi. Unfortunately, Certain farm practices over time have reduced or eliminated mycorrhizal fungi from agricultural soils. So how do you return them after they have been lost? Well, the seeds of these fungi, called spores, are placed near roots. And active roots cause the spores to germinate and penetrate into the root system. Mycorrhizae form structures where both the plant and the beneficial fungus can exchange food and energy. These mycorrhizal filaments radiate out into the surrounding soil and form an elaborate web of tiny absorbent threads. These access nutrients and water that are tightly held onto soil particles. The fungus transports nutrients and water back to the plant to fuel its growth. And like a cotton ball, this extension of mycorrhizal threads efficiently absorbs fertilizer. This reduces nutrient loss and pollution of groundwater, lakes, and streams. The spores germinate, attached to the roots, radiate out of the surrounding soil, and they create like a cotton ball. And that cotton ball absorbs the important soil nutrients and water, and then translocates it back to the plant. The way mycorrhiza is able to uh, capitalize on these nutrients in the soil is through the use of, a, of enzymes and compounds that are excreted from the actual hyphae of the, of the organism. That in conjunction with other uh, organisms in the soil actually mine it and return nutrients to the plant to, uh, take, to actually supply the nutrients that are required. In my own experiences in California soils, um, particularly on almonds, which is what I farm, um, almonds are voracious plants, require a lot of NPK and micronutrients for, for good health and, and production. And, um, and though mycorrhiza doesn't find everything it needs in our California soil, it makes our fertilizer much, much more efficient. I have an example of a tomato here that uh, has been inoculated with mycorrhizal fungi. Uh, as you see, these tomatoes behind us are vigorous, they're healthy. 
Tomatoes are a huge user of phosphorus, as many crops are, and uh, California especially has uh, huge deficiency problems in, in the middle of these desert soils. And so, a struggle we have every day trying to meet the demands of a crop. And not just uh, phosphorus, but zinc and many other nutrients are in short supply. About 90% of the, the corn samples I've seen taken at Tassel are deficient in potassium. And the soil test says we've got plenty, so what's going on? Obviously, we're not getting the nutrients out of the soil and into the crop like we should. Only Plant roots only occupy about 2% of the soil volume. Mycorrhizal inoculated roots with their hyphae can occupy about 20% of the soil volume. That's 10 times more absorptive capacity to get the nutrients out of the soil and into the plant where it does us some good on yield. And if we can get more yield with the same amount of fertilizer, that's a lot more profitable, that's a lot more environmentally sound. As far as my personal experience with the uh, commodities in our basin, one of the uh, great stories that I've been able to share with uh, customers is the first use we had of mycorrhizae on our onions. We had a, a fungicide that was uh, actually suppressing the onion growth and or killing onions. And we had, uh, well into the season, we had nothing to, to uh, do but try to, try to recover the losses we had uh, already uh, had. And with uh, what we did is apply mycorrhizae strictly on the uh, onions that were suppressed and or dying. And this was uh, about five weeks after emergence, which is well into a growing season for onions. Uh, by the end of the season, uh, we ha had increased root growth, less disease, and out yielded the, the portion of the field that did not have uh, the mycorrhizae on it and also didn't have the uh, suppression from the fungicide. Uh, as far as, uh, and that story, since then, onions, 100% of our onions receive mycorrhizae uh, at planting time. The challenge of sustainability is to find a point to begin. The interesting thing about biological inoculants is that there's, there's a significant step we can make towards sustainability now. Biological inoculants can be used in conventional agribusiness and can bring us increased yields, reduce the amount of fertilizers, water usage. It can take us a big step towards sustainability now in the current situation because the problem is that often people think we've either got to change the whole system and they demonize modern agribusiness or they think uh, we've got to create a completely different alternative system, maybe small scale agriculture or maybe we simply tweak the existing system. But this is a way to make a significant step now. The biofertility industry is no longer a cottage industry. Uh, we've had to continue to expand our operations here at Mycorrhizal Applications to keep up with the demand. Uh, globally, the biofertility industry is between 500 million and a billion dollars annually. So it's increased dramatically in recent years. There's more carbon in the Earth's soil than the atmosphere and all the vegetation on the planet combined. And that's important to farmers because carbon in the soil increases its ability to hold on to water, improves its structure, and ultimately its fertility and ability to produce crops. One of the ways in which carbon gets into the soil that's very important is through the activity of mycorrhizal fungi. Mycorrhizal fungi produce a sticky organic glue called glomalin. And glomalin is very important for soil structure and also improves plant growth and root activity. In agriculture, the ability of the crop to access water in the soil is a key to performance. Roots are too thick to access water that is tightly held between tiny soil particles. Tiny mycorrhizal threads can absorb water in small spaces and transport that water into specialized structures in the roots. Mycorrhizal fungi act like a sponge beneath the soil surface. The crop benefits from increased access to soil moisture and protection against drought. Putting on irrigation water isn't cheap. We're running out of irrigation water. Petroleum costs are going up, electrical costs are going up, and machinery is more expensive than ever. So how does mycorrhizae help reduce our irrigation costs? Well, there's three ways. It can get more water in the ground. It can keep water in the soil longer and it can get more water out of the ground when we need it. The glomalin that the, the uh, 
mycorrhizae produce increase the water infiltration by giving us a better soil structure. So instead of that water running off, it's going in the soil where we want it, reducing all of our runoff problems and drowned out spots and erosion. The second thing is that the glomolin that the, the mycorrhizae produce increase the water holding capacity of the soil. And so it's storing the water better in between irrigations or rainfall. And then the third thing, because of that absorptive capacity, the, the extra ability to extract water, we can get more of the water that we put on out of the soil and into the plant. The opportunity is to use replenishing our soils as a fundamental fulcrum to make a, 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 a positive impact on sustainability. Right now, modern agribusiness uses, creates more greenhouse gases than the transportation sector globally. Almost one third of all greenhouse gases are created by our current agricultural system. Now, not only is it becoming too costly to operate according to conventional practices, but it's becoming profitable to do things differently. Right now, biological inoculants, because of advances in production technology, we're able to take any current conventional practice, agricultural practice, and increase yields 5 to 20 percent. That's worth billions of dollars. So there's nothing holding us back now from taking that step. We don't have to wait for anything to change. It can be done now, and that would be a step toward transitioning toward a long-term sustainable system based on healthy soil. Science is teaching us that our own human bodies are part of a microbiome in that we have microbial cells and human cells that work together. In fact, there are 10 microbial cells for every human cell. And they do some very important things for humans. They regulate our body, they digest our food, and they keep away deadly pathogens. So why are we so surprised that plants also depend upon microbes for their own health and productivity? If you ask somebody about biological agriculture a little over a century ago, they wouldn't know what you're talking about because all agriculture is biological agriculture. It's now only in the last century that with the advent of the internal combustion engine, the cheap and affor affordable production of fertilizers that we've shifted away from a practice that's sustained humankind for centuries, for millennia. So now we need to find a way to make our soils better, more healthy, because if we're not making them better, we're making them worse. Biofertilizers allow us now to take a step toward improving our soil health, moving us back to a sustainable position that we had 200 years ago, but we need to recover and restore today. What can we do to create a more sustainable world? A world that supports our own health and well-being, a stable climate, and food for generations to come? Well, you could recycle, you could drive a hybrid car. Maybe the best solution is right beneath our feet the living soil.